All right, here we go. So I'm thinking about uh, maybe making some cooking videos. See how this goes. So this is gonna be my first, my first one. Uh, you know, I'm just using my cell phone. I don't really want to go buy a bunch of equipment and make you know higher quality videos if it's not something I really feel like doing. Uh, but I enjoy cooking. So we're gonna see what this is. See what we can do. Today we're gonna make a soup, quick and easy, 30 minutes, start to finish probably. And yeah, so let me show you what we got. All right, so here's the ingredients. It's not really too much. Well, first off, let me just show you this. Slap your mama, crushed red peppers. That is 100% optional. Uh, you can leave that out totally, um, but I can't. All right, so what I got here, I got two cans of diced tomatoes. Usually I use one 28 ounce can, but I, I don't, don't have it, this is what I got. So I'm using two 15 ounce cans, I think it'd be just fine. Uh, you know, any kind of diced, you want the oregano, olive oil, whatever, you want diced. I really think fire roast would probably be really good, but it doesn't matter, whatever you want. Two cans of diced tomatoes. Eight ounce tomato sauce. One can of beef broth. Some dried oregano, some olive oil, salt. And you see I use kosher salt. You can use whatever salt you want, but if you're still using iodized salt, probably go ahead and uh, do a real quick Google search on why you shouldn't be doing that. Move on over to some kosher salt. All right, and I got some refrigerated tortellini. I'm gonna go ahead and use this prosciutto and cheese. This to be a little different, but any kind of refrigerated tortellini you want. This is a 10 ounce package. With this, what you want, nine to 10 ounce package, whatever you can find. All right, you need some Italian meatballs. So I got a 12 ounce package. It's 24 half ounce meatballs. If you got bigger meatballs, I mean, you just figure whatever you want, but make sure you get the Italian style. Then spinach. I'm not gonna use this whole bag. I'll probably use about three quarters of it, but you want some fresh spinach. A lot of times I use baby spinach. Spinach, it doesn't matter, just delicious. And then you want about an onion, medium size. But what I've been using lately, let me show you this. I've just been buying this, chopped onion frozen. And the reason why I've been doing this is because I'll buy a whole bag of onions and use one onion, two onions, and then I don't use the rest. And they, you know, uh, we don't cook as often as we used to now that our kids are full grown. So, and then this right here, like I said, I'll show you when I put this in. I just put a pinch of that in and I season that up a little bit with the onions. Um, the only other thing I don't have on here is some chopped garlic. I'm probably gonna use it out of a jar. Um, Cause again, I'm just trying to make this quick and easy. So, let's see. All right, I'll get started in a little bit. So it just dawned on me, maybe you know, while you're cooking, you want to uh, pair some wine, you know, pair some wine with this. Um, so I'm going to give you my recommendation right now. Just kidding. I'm drinking wild turkey. This shit goes with everything. Wild turkey 101 is just a classic. Drink it neat, on, on the rocks, however you want. Uh, but this will pair pretty well with just about anything you cook. So uh, if you prefer wine or beer, then go for it. But I say drink more turkey. All right, so I got this onion. I got this onion sauteing in some olive oil. I don't know, maybe a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. I just poured a little bit in. And you know, I use them frozen onions, so I don't know how much that is. You know, just use an onion, whatever you want to use. Um, but that's the onion I use. Now I'm gonna show you what I do. You don't have to do this. This is what I do, because it's me. But I like to add a little bit of that slap your mom in there. You know, I don't put too much. This just add a little labor, flavor. People won't even know it's in there really. But it's good. So just a little bit. That's all I do. You know, stir that up. So I'm gonna let this stuff saute down for a couple more minutes, you know. What we're really doing is just, uh, you know, making a base. You know, almost everything I cook, I normally use Trinity, right? The bell pepper, onions and celery but since this is an Italian soup I decided I would just use onion I reckon I could have just done it but 
<laughs> I made this last week and I already know how good it's going to be. So there you go. I'm going to let this saute down. You know, brown them up a little bit for a little bit. We'll be back. All right, so we've had this uh, onion sauteing down. I don't know, a handful of minutes. I got this on medium heat. You see, I'm using a Dutch oven. You can use any any pot you want, but these heavier pots distribute heat a lot better, and I just find it's a lot easier to cook with without having you know soups and stews, you know, without having it stick to the bottom too much. So, anyways, I've had this you know sauteing down. I don't know how long, you know, until they're soft. You ain't got to cook them to death. You know, you want to brown them up, you can do whatever, but so they sauteing down, so I'm going to add some garlic now. Now, I told you I'm going to use this out of the jar. I don't know how much that is. Big spoonful, you know. You know, if you want to use fresh garlic, knock yourself out, it would probably be, probably be better. But I ain't got time for that. And that's a, another thing, you know, I'll buy a whole head of garlic, use three cloves, and the rest goes bad. So, I just cheat and use this. I will tell you this, when I'm cooking with garlic, like I didn't even measure that, I just put a spoonful in. But if I'm following a recipe and it says one clove of garlic, to me, I read four cloves of garlic. That's how I just time garlic by four usually. So how much garlic should you put in here? As much as you want. Uh, but I'd say a clove, maybe two. You know, that was probably, probably more than that, but that's me. So we can let this go for about, I don't know, just another minute or two. I don't want to burn the garlic. So, we'll be right back. All right, it's only been a, a couple minutes, but I'm really starting to smell that garlic now, so I know it's ready. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and add my tomatoes. I don't drain them or nothing. Just go ahead and put them in. And at this point, you really could add the rest of the ingredients right now, and that'd be fine. But I like to go ahead and stir these tomatoes in and bring it back up to temperature and let this marry in with the garlic and onions real quick. Once this gets hot, then I'll start adding the rest of the stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this warm back up. Ooh, is that like a tomato leaf? Look at that, right out the can. You see that? It's out the can. I ain't never had that before. <laughs> All right, well, we'll be back once this gets back up to temp. Well, while we're waiting for that to warm back up, I just figured I'd tell you, you know, earlier I, I talked about drinking wild turkey while cooking. You ain't got to do that. That's, that's definitely optional. Oh, but it's so good that you really should. Mm. All right, so temp's, temp's back up. So, you know, right now we really could just go ahead and add everything in. So we're gonna add eight ounces of tomato sauce. That goes right in, right? Then the oregano is really only a half a teaspoon. That's all you gotta put in. So that's a half a teaspoon of oregano and then about a half a teaspoon of salt. Now, if you know you like, like things, you put a lot of salt in, you can go ahead and add more. If you try not to eat so much salt, you know, that's a, that's a subjective deal. Towards the end, when we're when we're almost done, we'll taste this right before we add, right before we add the spinach in. If we need to add more, we can. I'm sure you've heard this a million times. You can always add, can't take away. So there we got that. And go ahead and let this marry up for about a minute or two before I add in the beef broth. You could just dump it in right now. It's just you know. Just what I do. So one other thing. I got this better than bouillon beef base. This is 100% optional too. But I like to add in just a little spoonful, half a teaspoon maybe. It's, you don't have to, but I do. I feel it just adds a little bit, you know, a depth. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in that can of beef broth. Now if I was making a chicken base soup and I was adding chicken broth, I would use, you know, the chicken, uh, the chicken base. Go ahead and stir that. Look at that. It's starting to look good. I mean, look how we, look. Man, just trust me. This is going to be good. I know it looks simple, and it is. So this is the beef base, and this is about all I use. About a half, 
half a spoon, right? Like I said, you don't have to do this. It just fortifies that beef, that beef broth, you know? It just adds a little bit. You know, all these little things you do, just add a little bit of depth to things. But that's what I do. I add that in there. I don't know if people, when they, when they eat it, they're not gonna be able to know that I did that or tell the difference maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's un, maybe maybe it's useless, but that's what I do. But that's optional too. I don't think when I when I when I first got this recipe, you found this recipe, uh, it was on there. But I added in there. So we're gonna let this come back up to temp. Oh, you know what we're gonna do right now? Look at this. That's it. I just put a little bit of pinch. That's all I add because. I like things, you know, spicy. This isn't a spicy soup. Even with the slap your mama and that, it's not a spicy soup at all. I mean, if it was making it just for me, it would be, but it's for everybody. And just another little bit of flavor. All right, so we're gonna bring this back up to a simmer. We still on medium heat. Once this gets simmering really good, we'll add the meatballs. Yeah, so a couple of things. I know that I'm not looking in the camera half the time because I'm looking at my face. Um, I know I've got shadows everywhere. Uh, the volume may not be that great. Um, <laughs> this is my first video, and I'm really just doing it to have fun. So we'll see. If, I don't know if it's if it's fun enough. I'll buy better equipment and do better. But anyways, let's get back to this. So it's simmering now. Everything's marrying up pretty good. So what I'm going to do? I'm add these meatballs. There they are. They're frozen. 24 half ounce Italian style meatballs. You can do whatever you want. You want bigger meatballs? You want to homemade your meatballs? You want it, whatever you want to do. But like I said, this is just an easy weeknight meal. So there they go. So I just put these in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let these simmer in here on this medium heat for about 15 minutes. I mean, have you been keeping track of time here? We really haven't been doing much. You know, and I could have made this faster by just dumping everything in at once, once the onions are done, but you know, I broke it up a little bit because I do that. I don't know. Makes me feel like I know what I'm doing, I guess. But yeah, we're going to uh, listen to some Hank Williams Jr., drink some wild turkey, and chill out for about 15 minutes. And then we'll be back to finish this up. All right, so I started thinking about it. Earlier I said that the slap your mama and the red pepper flakes I added don't make it spicy and it's not spicy at all and it's good enough for everybody. Um, well, you know what? Me and my family, we eat spicy food. That's what we do. We eat spicy food. So when I say it's not spicy at all and we don't notice it, that might just be us. It might not be for you. So if you don't like spicy food at all, then just leave it out. You know, if you do, then just, just add a little bit. It's, you know, to me it tastes way better. Um, but, you know, I don't want you to think I'm saying it ain't spicy and then you put it in like, oh my God, I can't eat this. Um, so yeah, that's it. So we got about 10 more minutes. Uh, here, let me go ahead and show you what it looks like right now. So it's simmering away. You see it, you know, I come in here and stir it every so often. With this heavy pot, I don't really have to worry about it sticking to the bottom, you know, but if, you, if you're not using a heavy bottom pot like this, you know, you may have that problem. You might want to stir it a lot more often. Keep it from stirring, you know, like we used to have that Paula Dean one, you know, the big stock pot. I mean, I still have it. I just don't use it as much because everything would stick to the bottom. I'd burn everything. So I broke down, spent a little money, and got this ceramic coated cast iron Dutch oven. So yeah, we got about 10 more minutes, and then we'll, uh, we'll add the tortellini. That doesn't cook very long, and then we'll add the spinach and be done. So while, while that's cooking, let me just tell you, uh, another optional part of this recipe. When it's totally done, you can stir in a quarter cup of heavy cream. And that'll make it, you know, a lot, a lot creamier of a soup. Um, and it's really good that way. Uh, me personally, I like to leave it out a little bit. Um, 
And another reason too is, you know, heavy cream, you buy it. Even if you buy the small thing, you only use a little bit and the rest goes bad. I'm not gonna buy just, for, just you know, I don't know. If I had it left over from something else I was doing, maybe I'd add it. But usually what I do is I just leave it out and it's delicious. And then what people can do is, cause we, we always have sour cream in this house. What, what you can do too is at the end when you make your own bowl of soup, you can just take a table, you know, a little uh, spoonful of sour cream and stir it in and that'll, you know, uh, make it a little creamier and it's really good. But again, you know, that's all options, you know. I really like it without any of that in there for me. So uh, that's something to think about whatever you want to do. Like whenever you, man, first off, when you're cooking, do you do whatever you want? don't have to follow any recipes. I never follow a recipe. I take like 10 recipes and mix them to one and then change it up. Uh, do what you do, what your family likes. So anyways, but you should follow this recipe because it's awesome. All right, I'm back a little early. So I was looking at this and man, it was it was almost a full on bowl. It was, it was cooking a little, you know, I wanna simmer this, you know, maybe a little bit more than a simmer, but I definitely don't need to be boiling, boiling. So I cut the heat back to about a medium low. I got about seven minutes left of that 15. So we about halfway and I just noticed it was, it was, it was boiling. Here, let me show you what it looks like. Right now. So that's what it's doing now. That's a, that's a pretty good simmer. I just cut the heat back a little bit. It may, my, it'll probably die down a little bit more than this too. Yeah, see it already looks like it is. So, all right. So I'm gonna go back to karaoke and Hank Jr. And I'll see you back in a couple minutes. All right, we're back. Look at that. I mean, doesn't that just look so good? Tomato meatball soup. I mean, 15 minutes. Magic has happened. It tastes delicious. So I tasted it. Um, I did go ahead and add another pinch or so of salt. Um, not too much, but it definitely needed it. I think everything's good right now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the tortellini. So this is refrigerated tortellini. It's not uh, frozen or whatever. It only takes a couple minutes to cook. What you won't, don't want to do is overcook it because then it all just fall apart. Um, and you know, it'll happen anyways, one or two of them, but so the package directions for the stuff I bought says four minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook it probably for about three and a half. All I want is for this to get cooked through. Don't drop the package in the soup. And then, cause I'm still gonna cook the spinach for about a half a minute. So for about three and a half minutes, let this cook in here. Just stir it in. Let it get in there. You know, it was at a, at a heavy simmer, not quite a boil. So about three and a half, four minutes. And then we're gonna add the spinach. And then that's pretty much it. So I'll be back in just a minute to tell you about this spinach. All right, we're back again. So it's been a little, I set the timer for three and a half minutes. That's gone off. It's been a couple more seconds. So it's probably closing in on four minutes now. It took me a minute. I had to get everything ready. I was not prepared. So let me let me tell you about the spinach. How much spinach do you add? Well, let me tell you. I'm going to show you. That's one handful. And that's two handfuls. And look at this bag. This is about what's left. Remember I told you I was probably going to use about three quarters of it. It was a 10 ounce bag. What I'll do with the rest of this stuff is I'll save it and put that in a wrap or something. But that's how much spinach you add. It may seem like a lot. I mean, if you've cooked, like I said, look how big those is. Usually I use baby spinach. But I got big spinach this time. But you know what? If you've ever cooked with spinach, you know what's about to happen. It's gonna disappear like it ain't even going in there. So this only, you can turn the heat off right now, but because I'm gonna leave it on for about a minute, then I'll cut the heat off. I'll be back in just a minute. All right, so look, here we go. Check this out. It was only about a minute or two. You know, I just stirred it around until the spinach starts to wilt, right? And then once it gets down to where it's pretty wilted down, um, I go ahead and cut the heat. Everything's done cooking. 
This soup is done. It smells amazing. I mean, but look at this. I mean, that's a pretty, pretty looking soup. Go ahead and slide this over. Get it off the heat. Now listen, you could probably leave out the spinach if you really wanted to. But I mean, you could be a communist too. It's up to you. You got to put the spinach in. Look how pretty it is. It's so delicious. And look, I mean, it's hearty. Look at that. That's a big tortellini, big meatball. I mean, this is a, this is a meal. Like I said, you could at this point stir in uh, about a quarter cup of heavy cream and make it really creamy. If you've ever had a really creamy tomato soup, it'd be kind of like that. But I really don't think it needs it, you know? Um, so cook it like this and then give the people the option. Stir in, you know, a spoonful of sour cream if they want it creamier. Let, let you know, let them do it. You know, or do it. You know, it's, it's really up to you. But look how amazing this looks. I mean, that's a soup. Um, but I think baby spinach... I don't know. Baby spinach... If you use baby spinach, the leaves almost all but disappear. I don't think it's really bad. I, I mean, it, it's, it's amazing. So I'm going to quit talking about it. Let this cool off. It's definitely too hot to eat right now. we got to let this sit for a minute. Cool off. Come... To an edible temperature but man so how long did it take I mean realistically uh, less than 30 minutes start to finish less than 30 minutes not no TV show like you used to watch 30 minute meals I don't know if you ever watched it I ain't trying to be like that I'm just saying this was super simple and easy and then when you feed it to folks they sit down at the table and get this and they're like man this is an amazing Italian soup this is better than I've had at Olive Garden. Again, that's subjective. But this is delicious. Super simple. If you don't try this, then you should go back to hanging out with Vladimir Putin. Alright, so that's it. Quick couple minutes. Quick couple minutes and the soup is done, that's it. Pretty simple. Um, you could add in, you know, the cream like I said. You know, um, you could put some uh, Parmesan cheese, you know, like the grated stuff. Uh, anything that you would do Italian-wise. You just put that on top, you don't need to. That's, that's all optional. Um, but that's it. <laughs> so simple, so delicious. I know a lot of times these cooking shows, they always show you, if you the bite, go, mmm. It's so good. I always find that cheesy, so I'm not doing it. If you want to know how this tastes, you don't need to see me eat it. You just make this soup, and you'll taste it yourself and realize how badass it is. All right.